minutes before he arrives at the trademark. I was on Simmons Freeway earlier, and even the freeway was jam-packed with spectators waiting their chance to see the president as he made his way towards the trademark. It, it appears as though something has happened in the motorcade route. Something, I repeat, has happened in the motorcade route. It was on my way home, and I heard it on the car radio. The presidential car coming up now. We know it's the presidential car. You see Mrs. Kennedy's pink suit. There's a Secret Service man, spread eagle, over the top of the car. I said, that's ridiculous. I said, this is somebody playing games, like an Orson Welles announcement of something. Reports say the president was hit in the head. That's an and they're going to say, we're only fooling. The president of the United States is dead. And you say, oh, no, that can't be. You know, you, know, you, just, you, you just can't believe it. President Kennedy has been assassinated. It's official now. The president is dead. So, uh... I drove into my driveway and there's my, my wife and uh, my youngest daughter holding my youngest daughter and they're both crying like babies. Women here in shock, some have fainted. Grown men, Secret Service men standing by the emergency room, tears streaming down their face. Immediately I knew this was going to be the biggest story we've ever worked on. So I told my wife to uh, pack me a bag with plenty of underwear and my toilet gear and I was going to be... Uh, staying for a while at the, at the Globe. I was the night editor at the time. That, uh, in effect, ran the paper when, uh, when the bosses left. People came in on their own, they were flooding in. So it was a huge staff we had. They canceled all the ads. It was pretty much a clear open paper for us. One of the things that struck me is that you could see people who are, it's a cliche, hard-bitten newsman, but it's, you know, it's true. They could deal with so many uh, tragedies in your lifetime and tragedy makes news. To see people doing their job with tears in their eyes, that was a unique expression of you know, how everybody felt. This is a sad time for all people. We were writing for history at that time, and putting the whole paper out, and we knew it was going to be an historic edition. Sometimes the, the person who edited the lead story would write the headline, but this was the one I wanted for myself. I you know I was doing it for history. So uh, we opted for a... Uh, Mood headline, and I, it was my wording and my selection. It was shock, disbelief, and grief. History was being made, you know, and you want to be part of it, and that's a tangible part of it. It, it was just a, a national wake. Kennedy, as you know, had a bad back, and he hid it mostly from, uh, from the public. He wanted to project the Im image of a you know, healthy, robust kind of a president. But he, uh, one of the things he uh, allowed himself to do was to have a, a rocking chair in his office. A couple of days after the, all the turmoil died down a little bit, uh, they were moving the Kennedys out of the White House and out comes the, the rocking chair. So I picked that, I said, you know, this is an angle it was symbolic of the fact that the Kennedys were now out of the White House because here goes Jack's favorite chair, you know. Then we had Bobby Kennedy and, and Martin Luther King, and, but they were all very believable stories then. And nobody ever said, oh, that couldn't happen because we had seen it happen with, you know, with the president who supposedly was the most guided person in the world and still they can pick him off from a, you know, from a window, you know. Yeah, it became a part of the fabric of everybody's life from, you know, from that day on.